Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations from leaders in digital infrastructure. I'm Buffy Harakitis of JSA, and joining me today is Andrew Lindsay. He is the CEO of FlexNode. Welcome Thank you back. For having me, Buffy. Yes, always such a pleasure here in Cannes, France, of course, no better place uh, for Data Cloud Global Congress, the 20th edition. How are you enjoying the show so far? I can't complain with Can being the venue, but it's it's actually been a really great show. You know, I would say the the mix of groups here um, allow for a lot of engaging meetings and, and frankly getting things done and deals done. So it's been it's been a lot of fun. That's great. Well, talking about getting things done and deals done, why don't you tell viewers a little bit more about FlexNode's modular design approach uh, and how it intersects with sustainability goals, especially when it comes to reducing construction waste and integrating renewable energy sources. Absolutely. Um, so at FlexNode, really our, our core focus being born out of the construction industry is to minimize the challenges that we've seen historically by modular data centers. We see now that the sheer demand of capacity that's happening globally requires a new approach that minimizes the workforce impact that's happening because the sheer complexity of these solutions is getting out of hand. And so what we're doing is um, working with a number of incredible partners to create these essentially modular Lego sets that allow for a Lego level of configurability for our customers that they're not, not necessarily currently seeing with a conventional modular solution. And so for us, the big focus in that pursuit is not only just allowing for uh, minimized risk on site, which also minimizes rework and waste, which I think we'll get into, but it also allows for us to deploy in a diverse set of locations, including where there's stranded power capacity in the grid. Yeah, I mean, stranded power, you know, it's it's critical, uh, especially when it comes to AI workloads uh, and the power dilemma that we're in, right? So finding that stranded power. What types of buildings or environments has FlexNode seen the most success with adaptive reuse? And why do you, how do you evaluate a site's potential for modular deployment. Yeah, absolutely. So first, it's that um, on the adaptive reuse side, the starting point really has been a driver from the supply side rather than from the demand side, in the sense that customers aren't asking us to go into a specific facility that we have to adaptively reuse. It's more that the owner or the operator of that facility wants a new use for it, and they want to be able to optimize the value for it. Historically, what we've seen is, is groups that actually understand the potential value for a data center going into their facility being the most interested groups these days, which is more like industrial real estate owners. But what we're starting to see creep into the picture is also commercial and life sciences real estate owners who are now starting to see from the demand side clients that are wondering how they're going to solve for these AI problems that are getting a lot more complicated at an infrastructure level than they were prepared to see. Yeah. And how does the concept combined with FlexNode's liquid-cooled and low PUE uh, design contribute to lowering the overall environmental footprint of data center deployments, especially in more urban areas? Absolutely. So our focus as a, a liquid-neutral AI native data center is, is really enabling a customer to have a, a variety of liquid-cooled solutions that they can pick from oftentimes depending on what their preferred OEM and ODM uh, suggests that they use, but oftentimes also in consideration of, of the performance metrics that they're trying to meet with their sustainability goals. And so for us, where we try to lean from a PUE perspective, although we are also seeing the PUE metric getting a lot of pushback in the market for a lot of reasons that we'll get into with greener data, no doubt. But um, we really focus on roughly a 1.2 or less uh, PUE efficiency. So really that 20% of, of cooling on top of the, 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 the IT load. Uh, so that, that's our focus on one side. The other side though, from a sustainability perspective, is reducing the amount of waste and rework that goes into the build of the data center. <clears throat> what we're seeing oftentimes is that when you have groups that are dealing with these more complex AI infrastructure builds, even if they are a highly reputable firm and the delivery of a lot of data centers historically, liquid cooling has added a level of complexity, including adding a trade to a space that didn't typically have that trade, water in the electrical space. And it's forcing this idea of 
how many errors are we going to make and then how much are we going to throw out to reconcile those errors. Yeah. And with Flexnode, we're really working hard to make sure you have few, if basically none, and most of those are actually ironed out off-site in one of our partner's facilities where we're manufacturing. I mean, not to mention the embodied carbon uh, when Absolutely. you're building these facilities, especially in the mass scale of these campuses that we're seeing, right? It's, it's a really, really great point. And I, I love that you brought that up, Buffy. So on the embodied carbon side, it's, it's worth appreciating that scope one, scope two, those are much more understandable and manageable from the construction perspective. But scope three is very complex from the construction perspective. The hey. suppliers, materials, transport routes, you name it. It's very difficult to measure your overall embodied carbon impact. And by using an offsite construction approach, you're able to iron out a lot of then the less predictable factors, as well as where you're getting your materials, your supplies to, to measure that embodied impact. Yeah, I mean, everything counts. I mean, you mentioned the Greener Data chapter that you'll be writing. Uh, we're so honored to have you in Greener Data Volume 3. You want to give a little preview there? Um, well, we're working on it a little bit, but the big focus for us is going to be how this new wave of AI infrastructure is actually a direct bridge between the IT world and the construction world, which is giving birth to a completely un new understanding of what infrastructure looks like. And it actually offers a real opportunity for us to solve for these sustainability problems that the construction industry is seeing in real time in a much bigger way than we've seen historically in the construction industry. And I think, you know, the speed and rate of the data center industry is going to be a driving force for that. Well, it's such a pleasure, Andrew, to have you here Thank you for uh, on JSA TV once again. And we're looking forward to that chapter in Greener Data Volume 3 that's launching on Earth Day 2026. We're counting down the days uh, for that. And again, always a pleasure. Thank you, viewers, for tuning in to another episode of JSA TV from Data Cloud Global Congress in Cannes, France. Happy networking.